there are at least six reasons that come to mind on why it is not mentioned. Reason number one. The Gospel of Mark was written to demonstrate Christ as the servant. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The nativity accounts in Matthew and Luke make sense, because they would be important to establish both messianic and human lineage. However, it does not suit Mark's purpose, as the lineage of a slave or a servant is unimportant. This answers your question, about why one would not expect Mark, to mention the virgin birth in his gospel. It did not suit his purpose. Reason number two. Mark's gospel launches straight into the miraculous ministry of Jesus without mention of any of his early years. To argue against the virgin birth from a silence would be as nonsensical as denying other events mentioned in Matthew and Luke, yet omitted from Mark. In the pre-ministry years of Jesus a typical harmony of the Gospels mentions 17 separate events, which are covered by Matthew and Luke but not by Mark nor John and Paul. And during his Galilean ministry a further four, yet there is no heated debate over their historicity. It is the very miraculous nature of the virgin birth, that critics cannot accept and it is this, that leads them to cast aspersions as to the reliability of the evidence of just two Gospel narratives. It should be noted that in the missionary preaching of Acts, the Kerygma begins not with Jesus' birth, but with his baptism by John. Reason number three. It is always a risky business to assume someone does not know something just, because they do not mention it in the limited sampling of their writings that we now, many centuries later, have access to. In the first place, neither Paul nor Mark give a narrative account of Jesus' conception or birth. Had Mark offered us a birth narrative and written something about Jesus' origins, that contradicted Matthew and Luke, that would be one thing. Then we could actually talk about differing accounts of Jesus' origins. This we simply do not have. Reason 4. The virgin conception is assumed. Reason 5. The Matthew priority is accurate. Matthew had already did a rather extensive lineage of the generations of Jesus, just repeating what Matthew already had said would be a waste of time and paper, whatever they were writing on at the time. And last but not the least reason number six. To say that Mark does not mention the virgin birth is not true. It is obvious that Mark does bear witness to the virgin birth indirectly in the scandal caused by the virginal conception, in Mark chapter 6 verse 3 where the Jews exclaim he is the son of Mary, rather than calling him son of Joseph. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended to him. Son of Mary is a strange circumstance surrounding Jesus' birth, because Jewish tradition elsewhere refers to men by their fathers, even if their father was dead. Thus we have here an insinuation concerning his birth and similarly Mark was acquainted with the virgin birth tradition. It appears that Mark is deliberately avoiding any reference to Joseph. Jesus is called son of Mary rather than son of Joseph by his hometown folks. This suggests that they knew something peculiar had happened in regard to Jesus' origins namely, that Joseph was not the father. An unfriendly interpretation of these origins would suggest Jesus was illegitimate. But we see a positive interpretation of those origins in Matthew and Luke. One more thing. Mark along with Matthew and Luke quotes Jesus as saying of the Messiah. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? How can Jesus be Lord and son of David? That is, how can a divine Christ be born of human stock? Hinting to the virgin birth.